Jesus. There is power in the blood to break the chains of bondage. The sin that comes is free. The blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. There is power in the blood, the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood, power in the blood. There is power in the blood, the blood of Jesus. Somebody lift your hands and just declare that his power in the blood of Jesus. So walk us by the There is power. There is power in the blood to heal and deliver. Please to cleanse all iniquities. The blood of Jesus. There is power. There is power in the blood. To break the chains, the chains of bondage. To set the captives free. To set the captives free. The blood, the blood of Jesus. There is power. There is power in the blood. Power in the There is power in the blood. There is power in the blood. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. There is power. power in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Power to heal, power to deliver, and a power to set the captives free. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 
and uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to tonight's podcast. This is Dr. Flo coming to you live from WAVN, A Voice of Victory. Hallelujah. And in tonight's podcast, we are um, in the series Excellence in Ministry, and we are going to start uh, step two of Excellence in Ministry uh, in tonight's podcast. And the scripture we're going to read is from the book of James chapter number one, uh, verse number five. James chapter number one and verse number five. And I'm going to read in the in the uh, King James Version. And the Bible says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and unbraideth not, and it shall be given him. And we're going to read verse 6. But let him ask in faith, knowing, uh, in, let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Verse number seven. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Number eight. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Hallelujah. And uh, we're going to read that in the Amplified as well, so we can hear the uh, transliteration on that as well. I love the Amplified uh, version because it gives it gives a broader perspective of the Scripture in an easier to understand term. So we're going to read James chapter number one of um, from a verse number five in the Amplified, and the Bible says, "If any of you lacks wisdom." To guide him through a decision or circumstance, he is to ask of our benevolent God, who gives to everyone generously and without rebuke or blame, and it will be given to him. But he must ask for wisdom in faith, without doubting God's willingness to help. For the one who doubts is like a billowing surge of the sea that is blown about and tossed by the wind. Verse number seven, the Bible says, For such a person ought not to think or expect that he will receive anything at all from the Lord. Being a double-minded man, unstable and restless in all his ways, in everything he thinks, feels, or decides hallelujah praise the name of the lord and so as we start a step two of uh, our uh, lesson on excellence in ministry and the title is singleness of purpose singleness of purpose so our single purpose as ministers of god is to meet the needs of the people and as we have read in the scripture the bible tells us why single-mindedness is so important hallelujah a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways that's what the amplified bible says for being as he is a man of two minds hesitating now what happens when you hesitate for being as he is a man of two minds What happens when you hesitate? Your adversary takes the first step. You find yourself on the defensive with Satan ahead of you, beating you at every turn. If you are not single-minded about your purpose for being in the ministry, you will not have any definite direction. You will always be wondering what you are supposed to do. Hallelujah. So don't hesitate to step out on your faith. Remember, when you felt the first symptom of a cold or a flu strike you and you waited around for two or three days before you picked up your Bible and prayed about it, then later on you wondered why you waited until you were sick before you acted. Now, your hesitation gave the sickness an opportunity to get hold of you. 
Hesitating is not a quality of a single-minded person. It is a man of two minds. Hesitating, dubious, irresolute. James 1 and verse 8 in the Amplified, that's what is termed. Hesitating, dubious, and irresolute. Now, irresolute means indecisive. A man who has not thoroughly resolved things in his mind and settled them once and for all. He is unstable and unreliable and uncertain about everything he thinks, feels, decides. So if a man is of two minds, then the decisions he makes are split. When you get into an area of indecision, you are, you are at a standstill. You won't go either way. A double-minded man is one who tries to live by faith and protects his fear at the same time. He talks both ways. His faith proclaims, I believe God is going to heal you someday. Then his fear whispers, but I wouldn't want to say that you are well just yet. Inconsistency is hazardous. If you are hesitating and stepping out on your faith in ministry, your adversary will always be one step ahead of you. You will never see the power of God work through you to heal anyone. In the eighth chapter of the book of Luke, it records an event in the life of Christ, which illustrates the danger of instability and hesitancy. The Bible says, Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they called to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Wow. Jesus stated when they first entered the ship, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And this this, this this text is in Luke chapter number 8, verse 22 to 25, if you want to read that later. And Jesus stated very clearly when he first entered the ship that let us go over unto the other side of the lake. That was in verse 22. So there was enough power in those words to have gotten the disciples all the way across the lake. Yet... They became afraid and ran to wake Jesus, crying, Master, Master, we perish. So here is a perfect illustration of double-mindedness. They were speaking death to the author of life. They were speaking fear in the very presence of faith, personified the Son of the living God. They were consumed with the problem while the solution himself slept in the vessel. We perish didn't sound unstable to them, but to Jesus, it was a direct contradiction of what he had stated. When Jesus said to them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake, he knew without a doubt where they were going. The disciples should have, should have known that too. They should have stood in the bow of that ship and shouted, The Son of the living God, the Christ, has told us to go over to the other side. Now peace be still. 
So if they were not capable of exercising such faith, Jesus would not have had the right to rebuke them after he stilled the storm. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And the disciples were filled with wonder and astonishment. What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Jesus had, not spent, had, Jesus had spent an entire day expounding on the power of God to these men and instructing them in what the word would do. Then, when he demonstrated it before their eyes, they were dumbfounded. Instead of standing on the word as he did, they were double-minded. So a single-minded man is a man that makes quality decisions and settles them forever. If you are going to put the Lord, his work, and word first in your life, there will be times when you will have to bypass what you see in order to meet the people's needs. Don't hesitate, whatever it takes. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, preach the word in season and out of season. Hallelujah. As the Apostle Paul instructed young Timothy, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And that's in Second Timothy chapter number 4, verse 2 and verse 5. Preach the word. Now, when your congregation says we've got financial problems, don't hesitate. Deliver the gospel. When you have a building program to complete, preach the word. When the church says it can't be done, get with it. Don't spend your time trying to figure out how to get things done or how to get people to give. If no one is giving, then you, you are not preaching the word. People will support you if you feed them spiritually. Hallelujah. I love that. Now you may say, but I have no place to preach. I used to say that all the time. You may say, but I have no place to preach. Preach it on the street corner if you must, but do it. Minister to everyone you meet, everywhere you go. You know, in regards to this, I just want to share a testimony. There's a very young man. Uh, he is a very, very, very fiery or fiery, uh, different word, uh, different pronunciation of the same word. So th- this young man, I have, I have seen him, I have noticed how he has a desire for evangelism. He has a great calling uh, for evangelism. And this young man, he will go out to the market and he will just preach. He will just preach to the people in the market. And he preaches with such power and authority, and you can tell the anointing of God is upon him. Uh, whether whether the people in the market are, you know, paying attention or not. And I came to realize the other day I saw a video, and uh, when he started singing, the the ladies in the market started singing as well. They started praising the Lord. And singing together with him. I mean, it was just awesome to see that in the market. You know, going on in the market, even during this time of coronavirus. And during this time of lockdown and everything. But it was just so awesome just to watch and see how the women in the market were just singing and dancing and running around, you know, just praising the Lord. That was powerful. So... Just like we're being taught here by the Apostle Paul, he he told Timothy, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. So this young man that I'm talking about, sharing his testimony, you know, he has he has a gift of evangelism. He doesn't wait for his pastor who is our spiritual father to to tell him to go out to the to the street to preach the word. He, he, he gets up in the morning, he knows he has this calling, he has heard the voice of God, and he goes out to the market. And he preaches without a PA system. 
Now you tell me that is not preaching the word, in being instant in season and out of season and doing the work of an evangelist, making full proof of his ministry. Praise the name of the Lord. So don't say, I have no place to preach. Preach it anywhere that the Lord leads you. Hallelujah. 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 And I have also known a very, you know, as as my ministry, the, the, the backbone of our ministry is evangelism. And for many years I have done evangelism. I have gone to rural areas. I have gone to Port Victoria, Likuyani, Kapsukwon, different places that, you know, uh, some even I cannot remember. I have gone to Jinja. I have gone to Kampala, Busia, Uganda, Busia, Kenya, Malava, Shibale, Eshisiru, different places that I have gone to preach and evangelize in crusades. And I have known a very good, well-intentioned men and women of God who have sought God's anointing by praying earnestly. Oh God, I've got to have your power manifest in my ministry. They have spent hours and days praying, interceding and fasting. Every minister wants God's power and the gifts of the Spirit to manifest through them. Some would give anything in this world if someone they laid hands on would fall out under the power of God. You can beg until you change color. But it's only when you start preaching the word that the power begins. Your job is to meet the needs of the people. The word of God has the answer to every need. When you deliver the word, signs will follow. Hallelujah. So you don't have to worry about, I don't have a place to preach. You don't have to wait to preach in an altar. You can preach anywhere, wherever the Lord leads you. You will feel the leading of the Holy Ghost and just preach. And the moment you start preaching the word, then signs and wonders will follow because God has the answer to every need. Praise the name of the Lord. So when you roll all the care of it over unto God and simply say, well, Lord, You want them saved more than I do. You want them healed worse than I do. You want their needs met more than I. So I am just going to preach the word. I'll preach it in season and out of season. I'll preach it at night. The only thing I'll ever be accused of doing too much is preaching the word of God. Whether they respond or not, I'll preach the word. I will not be swayed by anything or anybody. I will preach the word. And this this resonates with with my heart and my spirit because you know when the Lord spoke to me about doing a podcast I thought to myself, "Lord, are you kidding me? You want me to do a podcast?" And he said, "Yes, you do a podcast." I didn't know what a podcast was. I did I had I, I I had not listened to a podcast before. Now, I knew what a radio was. I've heard and I've listened to radio several times, but I didn't know what a podcast is. And so I had to do research to find out about what a podcast is, how it works, how does it reach out to the people. And God is so faithful because in my research, He showed me and brought my way apps that I use now, you know, like Anchor uh, and REC. These apps that I use now that I record this podcast, I record on these multiple apps at the same time as I'm doing this podcast, and they are taken by these apps and the developers of these apps who are connected to other companies like Google and uh, um, uh, some something radio, uh, public radio, uh, something. They're connected to all these other platforms where when I do the podcast, they just receive them and send them out there. So the Lord showed me and he said, it doesn't matter even if it is one person who's going to listen to that podcast. You have done your part. Because 
My assignment is not the same assignment as somebody else's. And because of that, because of the obedience, I have seen that even doing the podcast is getting easier and easier and easier because now I'm understanding how to work the apps. Now I'm understanding um, how to, to, to uh, coordinate even the music. And I'm learning through the process. But at the same time, I am also reaching out to someone else out there who is going to hear this voice. And I don't know who is out there who's hearing uh, the, the sound of my voice because these are live. Whenever I do the podcast, it's live on Facebook. It's, uh, live, on, um, it's live on YouTube. And then it goes out to Anchor. It's live on Anchor. And then Anchor sends it to Google. So all these... How it works, I don't know. The Lord knows. But my assignment is to be obedient to what he has called me to do. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So even if it means preaching it to yourself at first, and then to everybody you come in contact with, be willing to walk away from anything in order to get God's word to others. When you make that kind of decision, I promise you, by the authority of the written holy word of God, that signs will follow your ministry. The necessary funds will come in and you will have more places to preach than you can handle. Hallelujah. So if you have one dollar or one shilling, use it to share the gospel. If you have a thousand dollars, or a thousand shillings, use it to minister the word. If you have a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred thousand shillings, use it to fulfill your calling. Praise the name of the Lord. And when you get through preaching, preach some more and more and more. And when you get tired, when you don't feel well, and even when you feel better, Just go out and preach. Do it. Just be obedient. God's word is all you need. Hallelujah. I remember one, uh, I think it was one one of the days last week, um, I, I, I was unwell. I could feel the symptoms of malaria. Uh, I could feel my body was weak. My joints were, were, were in pain. And I knew I had the podcast to do that night, but I was feeling not good. And let me tell you, I obeyed and I did the podcast. I was amazed when I listened to the podcast later on. My voice didn't sound any different. It sounded just the same. And by the end of the podcast, I was completely healed. While I was preaching the word, God was healing my body. And since then, I have not had any any problems. I've not had any pain. I've not had any sickness or any feeling of sickness in my body. I haven't had any symptoms of malaria. I am healed. So God healed me that time. Now, suppose I had disobeyed and said, you know what? I'm sick. I'm just going to go to bed. Imagine maybe one person would have would have missed to hear the podcast that night but because i was faithful and preached it anyway no matter what was happening in my body in the process god healed my body so i want to encourage you that god's word is all you need the scriptures will save you they'll heal you they'll fill you with the holy spirit They will turn you into the righteousness of God and meet your needs according to his riches and glory. The word of God will sustain you in every way. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing and by hearing by the word of God. A man filled with faith can do anything he can believe. All things are possible To him who believes. If there is ever a choice between the word and anything else, 
choose the Bible way. If you are a musician or a worshiper and God uses you in music, put the gospel to music. Whatever talent God has given you, use it to preach the good news. God sticks by the book. He stands by the book, by his word. You stay with the word and God will stay with you. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number one, verse number three, that he is upholding all things by the word of his power. So if you want to be upheld, then get on his promises. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Get on his promises. Get on his promises. And I can testify as I am a witness that by being obedient to the word of God and being obedient to what God has told me or called me to do, I have seen even at times where people don't understand what you're doing. People don't understand your calling. People don't understand your assignment. People don't understand what decisions you make. And that is, that is a very normal. Don't even worry about what anybody thinks. You know, just focus on what God has called you to do. One thing I always encourage myself is if I hear the word of God, if I hear the voice of God, then I know I'm in the right path. Everything else becomes noise to me. So the most important thing you should put in your life as a minister of the gospel is put the voice of God first in your life and the word of God and prayer. When you hear from God and hear by the word of God, the voice of God, then you will be positive of what decisions you need to make regarding your ministry. And it doesn't have to please people because sometimes you, you will do things that God will tell you to do that will go contrary to what everybody else is saying or thinking. You know, for example, I'm sure even right now, I have even, even people in my family, even in my husband's family, who just don't understand how in the world do you move from America back to Kenya for full-time ministry? Everybody is going to America and we are coming from America to come and minister the word of God in Africa. Why? I don't know. God knows. And when he spoke to us about this in 2017, we thought it was a big joke. And especially I did because, you know, working for... Uh, Brother Copeland and serving there at Kenneth Copeland Ministries, it was it was something I loved to do. That that was that was something I loved to do. It was an assignment that I wish would have lasted forever. But God had a different plan, and when He spoke to me about moving to Africa, I didn't I did not even say a word to my husband. Because how do you tell a Texan cowboy, a native Texan cowboy, that we are moving to Africa? How in the world do you go and tell him that, you know what, the Lord has spoken to me, we're moving to Africa? Now, if it was maybe somebody from Africa, an African, maybe that would be a little bit easier. But how do you tell a native Texan cowboy that we're moving to Africa? So I went before the Lord in prayer and I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if this is what you want us to do, you want us to move to Africa. I said, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying a word to my husband. I said, you tell him. And it took seven months. I didn't say a word. After seven months, one night, Nick just out of nowhere, he told me, he said, honey, I think we're moving to Africa. And I thought, okay, maybe he has had a vision of another country in Africa. And I said, and what country are you talking about? He said, we're moving to Kenya. I said, oh, wow, wow. 
and it was late at night, it was about midnight. And I mentioned to him, I said, uh, can we talk about this tomorrow? He said, yes, we can talk about this tomorrow. The next day was a Saturday, I wasn't going to work. And so at breakfast, he asked me, he said, do you remember what I told you last night? And I said, could you please tell me again? And he said, I've been thinking for the last three days and I've been seeking the Lord and I think we are going to move to Africa and we're going to move to Kenya permanently and you know, whatever God has called you to do, we're going to do it together and I'm going to stand together with you. I'm going to support you, do what God has called you to do. And that just blew me away. I, I, I just saw the, the, the faithfulness of God. It may have taken seven months, but I still had faith that it would come to pass. It may have sounded impossible. And sometimes you may hear the voice of God and you feel in your heart that Maybe it's not even God I'm hearing. And you start having doubts in your heart, in your mind. And then the devil comes and tells you, you know what, that's not going to be possible. How? But let me encourage you that don't give up. When you hear the voice of God, you just shut your ears to everyone else around you and follow what God says to you. Even if it seems so ridiculous to the people around you. Even if it seems so ridiculous, even to your own family members. Just listen to the voice of God. And seek his face through prayer, through the word. And preach the word in and out of season. Be obedient to the calling upon your life. So that you can fulfill the assignment that he has given you. And when you do that, you will see signs and wonders. And the signs and wonders may not be that someone is falling on the ground when you preach to them. But signs and wonders can come in diverse ways. Just even just blessing you. In, in ways that he, he just surprises you. He just surprises you. Signs and wonders come in various ways. So just be obedient to the voice of God. Seek his face. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in the word. And just remember that God always stands by his word. And when you stay with the word of God, God will stay with you. And in Hebrews chapter number one, verse number three says that he is upholding all things by the word of his power. So if you want to be upheld, then get on his promises. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So we have come to the end of our podcast for tonight. And I just want to thank you for tuning in. And before we go, if you do not know Jesus Christ, I just want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before your throne of grace. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I repent my sins. Your word says that if I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that you are Lord and that you died on the cross, then I will be saved. So Lord Jesus, I have heard your word and I come before you asking that Lord, may you forgive me my sins and come into my life and be Lord and Savior over my life. From today, I pray that, Lord, you will guide and direct me in every area of my life and that you will also ordain my steps to a good Bible-based church, that I will be able to learn your word and that you will place good shepherds over me to teach me your word 
to guide me in everything that I need to do and that you will give me the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of speaking in other tongues that your Holy Spirit is going to guide me in the way that I should go and teach me all truth. I pray that you erase my name from the book of death and write my name in the book of life. And from today, Lord Jesus, I ask you that, Lord, may you take my life and do something magnificent with it and show me where and how I need to serve you all the days of my life. From today, I acknowledge that I am born again. I am a new creation. I have a new name. And behold, the old is gone. I thank you for saving me tonight. And I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins and for me. And I pray these things, believing and trusting in your holy name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So we thank you so much. You have prayed that prayer. You are now a new creation. Behold, the old is gone. Don't even worry about what happened yesterday. Don't even worry about what happened an hour ago or even before you listened to this podcast. You are now a new creation. You have a new name and your name is written in the book of life. Hallelujah. I thank you for tuning into the podcast tonight and I want to wish you a very blessed night and until tomorrow night, uh, just remember there is power in the word.